Hi everyone, I'm Denise O'Malley, the founder of You Define Wellness, and welcome to another in our series called an Apple a Day webinars. These are tips and tricks to help you in your life to lead, lead happy, healthy, and thriving lives. And we are focusing right now on a series called Cold and Flu Season because it's cold and flu season. And so we wanna focus on prevention techniques and also if you do happen to get those little gremlins what to do about them so i am very happy to introduce you today to one of the you define wellness network providers kelly hoff with manifest natural wellness kelly thank you for joining us today thank you so much for having me denise i'm happy to be here oh good I have been looking forward to having you as a, um, a speaker in this series, and the main reason why is what you and I have in common is that we're both moms. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> the kids bring home the creds, and it infects our house. Mm -hmm. So you have a superpower that I don't have, and that is that you are trained in healthy um, lifestyle and eating and habits and things like that. So can we talk for a minute or two about, you know, being a mom and when the kid comes home with the creds and what you do with it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, oh, I really, I first focus on prevention. Um, if we want to maybe talk about that first, or I could talk yes. about, I could flip flop that either way is okay with me. Well, let's go ahead and talk about prevention. How do you keep those gremlins okay. out of the house? Okay, so for me, um, really the prevention really starts with gut health, good gut health, um, because 80% of the immune system is in the gut. So that's very important, and that's something a lot of people don't know, like they don't realize that. Um, and so as, you know, of course all year long, you'd like to have good gut health, but um, especially as it approaches this time of year, um, it's especially important to, you know, boost that up, to boost up the immune system. So, so I like that. I'm going to interrupt you here. Um, no I hear in my world, and remember, I'm a reformed insurance agent who happens to have a wellness company. It doesn't mean I'm an expert on wellness things. Okay. And I hear an awful lot about gut health. And I think um, if anyone is looking at uh, the world of wellness and they're new to it, they're hearing it as well. And I mean, are we talking about the stomach, the intestines, all of it? What, what are we talking about? It, it's really all of it. It's the entire digestive tract. Um, when, when, at least when I talk about gut health, mm -hmm. um, and really anyone who knows what they're talking about, that, that's, they would be referring to the entire system. Um, and so you, you want that to be intact and have good integrity um, so you are you know getting and absorbing all of your nutrients and keeping them um, and not having something end up happening like a leaky gut type of situation where you are then you know things that don't belong little tiny food particles that don't belong out in your bloodstream are getting out so Dude. good gut health entails all of that that sounded really gross <laughs> <laughs> it can be gross yeah <laughs> <laughs> and painful and yeah not good yeah so what are the things that you do to maintain a healthy gut so um there are several things um one is what you really want is you don't want dysbiosis which is that whole way too much bad gut bacteria versus the good gut bacteria so um to help that along you want to boost up the good and squelch out the bad um and there are several easy ways that you can do that um, so one is, you know, eating probiotic rich foods, um, such as I have over here, um, some sauerkraut. So fermented foods are great. Um, and with the fermented food, you are getting probiotics, the good probiotics, as well as prebiotics to feed those. And so you're going to grow more good gut bacteria. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a really good way for minute foods. Um, you know, you can make your own at home. I do that and I teach those kinds of workshops. I love it. Um, but for, you know, people who don't think that sounds so fun, this is a great alternative. So if you're, if you're looking at a sauerkraut or something though, that you think might be good, if it has vinegar in it, it is no longer a fermented food, a good for your gut food, 
now you have killed off the good stuff with that vinegar. Really? Yeah. So it, it should have salt in it, mm -hmm. you know, clean water, salt, the vegetables. But um, so like a, a lot of people think like I'm eating a plastic pickle, so I'm eating a fermented food. Um, no, not for your gut, you're not. It might taste good, but it's not going to help those good gut bugs. Okay, so what other types of fermented foods are there other than sauerkraut for people like me who cannot stand sauerkraut? Who can't stand it. So there are, like, especially if you make your own, you can do other veggies, any kind of veggie that you want, you could make. Um, they have some more out on the market now that aren't just, you know, the cabbage, the sauerkraut. Um, but other good options for you or somebody that doesn't like that, and you might not like this either, but would be um, the kombucha. Oh, okay. So kombucha is really good. And um, with that, um, what you want to look for to be careful on a store-bought would be um, too much sugar. Um, quite a few of them have a lot of sugar, like 12 grams per serving. So that, like this bottle would be 24 grams of sugar. Um, now, even though part of that's good for you, all that sugar is not good for you. Mm -hmm. So this particular one only has six sugars per serving, so 12 in the whole bottle. If, if I'm drinking a commercial store-bought one, um, I look for the lowest sugar I can find, and then I just drink, you know, maybe a third of it. Mm -hmm. um, if you're making this at home, though, you can get it down to where it tastes a little more vinegary, but you can get a lot of that sugar content out. So mm. it's healthy for you, um, yet you're not getting that sugar. Okay, so you're paying attention um, as just a course of living uh, to your gut health. What other types of things are you doing uh, for prevention? For prevention, okay, so like another really great thing for gut health is bone broth. Um, bone broth is really good. Oh, bone broth. Okay. Bone broth, yes. Okay. Um, so bone broth is great because it has glutamine in it, glycine and collagen. So mm -hmm. it's healing to the gut. It helps that um, integrity of that gut lining. Mm -hmm. um, so like when I mentioned leaky gut before, you know, um, often people might have something going on that's not technically leaky gut, but that intestinal uh, lining might not be what it should be. So that's something really healing and good for that. I've seen a number of people on Facebook lately uh, talking about, oh, I'm feeling the scratchy throat and the crud's coming on. I'm going to um, uh, drink some bone broth. And, and quite fr frankly, I'd never even heard of it until oh, uh -huh. in the last couple of years. Okay, yeah. So, and I haven't tried it. So tell me, what does it taste like? It tastes really good. Um, it's, a, it's a richer taste than regular broth. Mm -hmm. um, a richer, I'd say a richer, deeper taste. And especially like I make mine at home. Um, I do it in a crock pot. It's really not difficult to do. It mm -hmm. takes a while, but you, you don't have to do a lot to it while it's going. Mm -hmm. um, and especially when you make it at home, it's got a really deep, rich taste. It's really, really good. Um, okay. so instead of just like regular broth, um, that bone broth, you know, it gets the marrow in there, it gets the collagen in there. So it's good for that gut lining, mm -hmm. which is good for you. And then also um, it has properties to it that are very helpful for upper respiratory. So, yeah. Okay, so if we're gonna make it at home, let's um, talk about how you make it at home. Um, I, I think everybody has a crock pot these days. Where do you find the bones? What kind of bones do you uh, use? You just put them in there with a bunch of water and let it sit for six to eight hours. What do you do? Um, so I do, just so you know, I have a recipe written down for it, but it's not hard. Um, you definitely want, you know, organic bones or pasture raised. You don't want something that's going to have, you know, all the residual hormones and pesticides in it. Um, or you're really, you know, counterproductive for your health by doing that. So um, you want those bones. One, one really good thing I do um, that's simple. So you can do like the full chicken. Mm -hmm. You know, the little chicken, you can crock pot that, get the meat off, put the bones all back in. Um, so there's your bones and you had a meal off of it, which is great. You add in your water. Um, you add in two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, which helps to break down the bone and get that marrow out. And um, then you add some veggies for flavor, really, basically. Um, you know, onion, celery, maybe a little carrot, that kind of mm -hmm. thing. 
and um, then you're going to let that go for at the minimum 20 hours, oh, um, wow. 20 to 24 hours. So typically, like I'll make, I'll make, I'll crock pot the chicken. Then we have that for dinner. I go ahead and put that in, um, put in the water, put in the vinegar, the veggies. That goes all the next day. Now you will need to add more water because as it, you know, boils out and dissipates. Yeah. But um, after that, then you just, um, so the next afternoon I add another one tablespoon of the apple cider vinegar along with adding in a little more water. Mm -hmm. And then by that evening, you can turn it off, let it cool. And you have got a pretty decent sized batch of bone broth. And even just drinking, you know, four ounces is very helpful. And it tastes great. Tastes amazing. And so then you've got also, um, as extra, you can make some other soups out of that that tastes really good. That's awesome. Yeah. That's a huge thing for me right now. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um, so cool. Um, other prevention tips. I mean, this is all good stuff. Cool. Good. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> um, so those are all good. Adding all those up. Um, really just the whole, um, again, with the gut health, um, the more probiotics and prebiotics you can get in you, the better. And, um, so there's, there's other supplements besides these foods that I like. There's supplements that I like as well. Mm -hmm. And, um, if you end up getting sick, I have a few things that are my favorites for that. So elderberry concentrate is really good. Okay, that's you're the second person to mention elderberry. Oh, really? Okay, so it's yeah. great. Um, this particular one, it, it's actually made in Kansas, and um, all it has is elderberry concentrate and water. That's it. No sugar added, not at all. Um, often I'll try, you know, I, I look around at various, you know, whole foods, sprouts, vitamin cottage, and you can find elderberry, but often it has a ton of sugar added in with it. Um, and this is just the concentrate. So it's a little bit tart, but it's, um, you know, if, if for you it's too tart, you could mix it in with something. Um, I love it and I can easily sneak it into my daughter's little cocktail of stuff we give her at night and, and she's good with it. Um, it's anti just, Okay, let me, let me get it. The yes. cocktail is not alcoholic. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> that's, yeah. Gotta be clear. <laughs> that's, that's her tequila shots at night. <laughs> uh, she, she has the cocktail of stuff she takes at night for um, seizures and autism. Mm -hmm. So, um, whole, whole different subject. <laughs> okay. I can sneak that in with it and she doesn't notice the difference. Um, I think it tastes great. So it's antibacterial, antiviral, um, antifungal. So it's perfect. Um, nice, natural thing to go to. Another do one I really do you love. you drink it as a concentrate? Um, all, you, all you need is like a tablespoon. Okay. So, so yeah, I drink it, but you know, you're not drink, drinking like a glass full. Okay. You just take a tablespoon of it and just drink it. Yeah, it's great. And that's all you need. Hmm. A, table, a tablespoon is great. That's yeah. good to know. Okay. Yeah. Um, another one of my favorites, I'm out of my plain MCT oil right now, but MCT oil, which is fractionated coconut oil, the liquid coconut oil, mm -hmm. antiviral, antibacterial, antifungal again. So super good properties. Um, that's something, I mean, we, we take a teaspoon each or more, period. But if you're sick, that's a really good thing to teaspoon, tablespoonful. Um, currently, I have the Brain Octane, um, which is MCT oil on steroids, basically. No steroids. No steroids. <laughs> but uh, yeah, same idea. Um, and that is really good. Again, it, it has all those really good properties to it. Wow. So how frequently do, do the gremlins come to your house? Huh. Well, um, not very often anymore. That's and, great. um, you know, it, person by person, we're a little different, mm -hmm. but me personally, um, I used to struggle with high anxiety. I had terrible gut health and I would literally be sick for two or three weeks. 
I'd be better for about three weeks and I would be sick again for two or three weeks for like a four to six month time frame, like all during the fall and winter. Right. Uh, I was sick all the time. And once my gut health was better, I mean, it's completely different. Um, I get sick like once in a you know whole season now and it's, it, I get rid of it pretty fast. So that's really, I mean, it's amazing. Well, um, that's, that's the key right there. Right. So yeah. if you can build that up to where you're not getting sick a lot, that's all the better, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> then how do we treat once you're sick? Now it's fine. Everyone's going to get sick at some point, no matter what. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, if you can lessen that way, way down by, you know, getting your systems all working properly, then all the better. Um, yeah, what I like about what you've shared so far is that, you know, I think one of the obstacles to people integrating things in to change their lives, the, the wellness tips, is that it's overwhelm. And it's like, oh my gosh, this is going to be, this is just way too much. It's easier to go get the NyQuil. Exactly. And, right. You know, so what you're, what you shared with us so far is really easy tips. You know, the, the bone broth, yes, it's some work to do, right. but it's not a difficult process. And then once you made a batch of bone broth, I'm going to assume you could put some in the freezer if you wanted to. Absolutely. I always do. It stores yeah. really well so yeah. that you can just pull it out when you need it. The elderberry um, concentrate, I like that idea. Hey, if you're going to take a, a, you know, tablespoon of Robitussin, this is just as easy. <laughs> um, right you know, and, and healthier for you. And yeah, these are very simple tips. Yeah. They're, they're tips that any busy mom or dad can uh, implement. Right. You can just incorporate those in and, and they work for you. Um, they aren't difficult. They don't take a lot of extra time. Yeah. They aren't terribly expensive. Yeah. So, and, yeah. and I am going to make some of that bone broth. Mm, awesome. Uh, uh, yeah, because I think that I would be really healthy or help our family. Uh, and mm -hmm. all that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Cool. So what other things do you have in your bag of tricks next to your desk? <laughs> <laughs> it's been fun watching you. <laughs> You're like, hmm, what else is there? Yeah, come on. This feels like Christmas. Um, well, so pe for people who maybe don't like the bone broth or the, or the taste, this is just another option is the collagen peptides. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, you're going to do a very similar thing, um, to the bone broth, you know, in your body, because you're going to be putting in those same properties. Um, so for somebody who wants to just like throw this into a smoothie or something, mm -hmm. they could certainly do that. Um, it's flavorless. You can even throw this particular one in coffee. Um, so that's a, it's a great option. Um, and you, you don't even notice that it's in there. And again, that's healing for the gut. So mm -hmm very good um and then the other one this um i can never say the name right for boy ron boy ron <laughs> but they have cold calm and they also have one that's for flu okay you can see that or not but um so if we do end up sick this mm -hmm. is one of my definite go-to's and this is one of those um you know, you, as soon as you notice that scratchy throat, you want to, so I just have some in the house during this season. And if you just start noticing that, um, this is another really good natural helper for the body. So, um, I'm all about, well, there's my business name, manifest natural wellness, because your body is made to heal and be healthy. Um, mm -hmm. so anything natural, is what I want to try first. And then there is a time and a place for, you know, needing something more, but you know, get, getting that body, you know, working right and working for your benefit is definitely what you want to do. Well, you know, I think there really is a, um, a desire by many people to, you know, be healthier and, and make those conscious decisions that, Hey, you know, uh, salad over pizza, you know, or do things in moderation. Right. But when it comes to making changes that are completely foreign to them because they lived off of, if something was wrong, pull open the directory for your medical insurance plan and go find a doctor and, and then oh, pop yeah. a pill. Right. 
we were trained that way. Um, yeah. and, and, you know, ever since, well, I know my generation um, and, and on down was, mm -hmm. but there, there isn't this training and the knowledge and the education um, in the schools of how to do this. I mean, I still look at the food pyramids that they're teaching and it oh. drives me nuts. It's terrible, yeah. But the education has, um, has not caught up with the trends. And so trying to find the information on your own, I think is just really overwhelming to a lot of people. And, and integrating it in. So like I said, this, I'm, I'm thrilled with some of these ideas because they are easy. And I think the key is start with one thing. You don't have to do everything at once. You can't eat an elephant in one bite. You don't want right. to, you know, you, you, if you need to go really slowly, try one thing, go get that elderberries, um, concentrate and start there if you need to. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so let's, that's the lay person's um, view. Let's talk about the professional view. If you had one thing that you said for somebody to start with, what is the one thing? Um, well, I'd say if they're already sick, mm -hmm. um, the elderberry is a really good spot to start in. Um, yeah. And supplement that with water and sleep, getting the oh, rest yeah. you need. Oh, yeah. Definitely. You know, right its course. You need all of those. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, and then, you know, for preventing, it, it really is building up that gut health. So um, adding in the fermented foods or um, I also work with another line of supplements that has prebiotics, probiotics, phytobiotics in a digestive blend. Mm -hmm. um, that's really good. And it's a nice comprehensive product that mm -hmm. has all of those in it. Um, so especially for somebody who might be, um, they think, well, I don't want fermented foods and I don't want bone broth and whatever, um, for them, a supplement like that, that's comprehensive might be a better place to start. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, frankly, some of all of that is really good. Awesome. So let's talk a little bit about your business, um, uh, moving okay. away from cold and flu. I think we've beat that one, um, to death. And, yeah. and <laughs> But let's talk about your business. Um, tell me what you do in your business and how you work with your clients. Okay. So I specialize in gut health, imagine that, um, as well as uh, that like chronic stress and overwhelm that so many people have, um, anxiety, depression, inflammation, and fatigue, which really all cycle together mm -hmm. because they, they're, they're so connected. Yes, so they something going on up here, you've got a, you know, a, a mental state that's not well, likely it starts in your gut. Um, if, if you've got, you know, IBS going on or reflux or things like that, um, almost everybody with that as well then has something mental going on. So it's definitely, you know, that vicious cycle um, that so many people have. And that, you know, inflammation state, when you're in fight or flight, that's causing that. Um, when you have leaky gut going on, that's causing inflammation. So really, you know, inflammation is also at the root cause because it, it's all tied together. So I really, I really like helping my clients um, and kind of how I approach the, um, you know, if you get a cold or a flu. Okay, so here's a few things we can do and try. And we, we pick something that seems doable to them, but not something they've already been doing. And we start working on that. And then as they're kind of getting the hang of that and starting to get into that habit, it takes a little while for that to happen. But then we add in some more things that are going to help them turn that all around. And um, it's my approach is baby stepping it as well as my approach is um, because I want it to be doable for you, but, you know, some, to stretching you into a, a new place. Um, so that way you're going to build in those new habits of things to do. That's amazing. So I am going to share your uh, website right now. And this is how you get in, in touch with Kelly. If you have any questions, you want to have a consultation with her, see if it's a fit for working together. But as you can see, she has an incredible about, amount of knowledge, not just on cold and flu, but on how to live a healthier life and a happier life when you do as well. So Kelly, let me ask you, um, what have we not covered that you wanted to make sure that we covered? Um, 
I would just say also, you know, with, if I'm helping someone with coaching, um, some people think that I don't have time for that, um, to add that into my busy life already. And I am stressed out, so I can't do that. Mm -hmm. But the way, the way I approach it with people, um, it makes it very doable and it really, I can totally help them, um, whatever their stress is in their life. So they can actually move through that and get to a point. Um, where they can enjoy their life again. So that is fantastic. I am going to share the screen one more time if my computer will go fast enough here. <laughs> yeah, it's an issue sometimes with um, my computer. Uh, oh, sure. What I'm doing. Technology. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of crazy. So I'm going to share with everyone the You Define Wellness website. It's youdefinewellness.com, where you can also find Kelly as well as over 200 other wellness um, practitioners that are in our provider network. And then if you're interested in getting healthy and you have a company that you own or you want to introduce us to the company that you work for, contact us. We're an employee benefit program that gives you access to the wellness professionals like Kelly um, that are in our network. So I'm going to close that off. Okay, you still there? Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Well, Kelly, I thank you for being with us today and sharing your knowledge. And to everyone who is watching this, thank you for joining us. And check out the You Define Wellness Facebook page for a list of upcoming um, additional talks like this one called an Apple a Day webinar series. So everyone, thank you for being with us and stay healthy and keep those gremlins away from your home. Thanks, Denise.